One side of the scientific protein community will say all that matters is getting enough protein in throughout the course of the entire day. When it comes to building muscle, losing fat and whatnot, as long as you get enough protein over the course of the day, that's what matters. Then you have another side of the scientific community that'll say, no, timing matters for optimizing protein synthesis, like timing around your workout, timing before bed, timing when you're insulin sensitive, yada, yada. There are conversations and discussions and even arguments to have on both sides. But then you have other people that'll say, no, as long as you get enough protein over the course of a week, it's, that's what matters. I think we need to unpack this more. And I want to open with a study that was published in the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise and Metabolism because it was a huge study, 116 trials with over 4,700 participants. And this was specifically looking at timing and it did find some interesting stuff. When they looked at 11 different forms of protein timing, they found a couple interesting things. For one, this is a little off topic, but still very interesting. They found that milk protein and red meat protein were the best for building muscle mass and building strength. And interestingly enough, slightly favorable towards milk protein when it came down to muscle mass. This is a little bit shocking. I actually would have thought red meat protein to be the best. Now, I think as a wholesome food, realistically, red, red meat's gonna be better, right? Like you're gonna have more nutrition, you're gonna have all the B vitamins, you're gonna have a lot of the micronutrients, but for sheer mass, it seems like milk protein was highly effective. We'll talk about that in a little bit because it does come into play with timing in a little bit. But what this study found with timing was that there was a slightly favorable effect towards pre or post workout protein consumption and nighttime protein consumption over other times. They looked at 11 different timing systems and they found that pre post and nighttime before bed protein ingestion seemed to make the biggest impact for muscle mass and strength. Interestingly enough, proteins surrounding the workouts seem to be most effective for muscle mass. Proteins surrounding bedtime seem to be the best for strength. Now, if you would have asked me before looking into this literature, I actually would have thought that protein before bed would have been better for mass because you're giving yourself amino acids throughout the night when you would be quote unquote fasted. However, it actually seems to be more favorable for strength. That's neither here nor there. I just find that very interesting. But what I did find intriguing was that milk protein seemed to be optimal. And we're going to unpack this milk protein thing because it does give us a glimpse into protein timing just a little bit. But first, let's look at a study that was published in Nutrients and get this out of the way that talks about plant protein versus animal protein. Systematic review looking at 16 different studies. And this was independent of resistance training. So outside of any resistance training, it seemed that there was a noticeably favorable effect with animal protein versus plant protein when it came down to muscle protein synthesis. There was also a noticeable difference when it came down to the percentage of lean body mass. So animal protein led to more lean body mass than plant protein. And it seemed to be even more beneficial in younger people than older people. Hmm. So animal protein works better for younger people. Well, not necessarily. What it means is there was a more noticeable change in younger people because younger people have better protein synthesis. Older people flat out just don't have as much protein synthesis, so the animal protein just didn't pull as big of a lever. What this actually tells us, believe it or not, is that older populations, just maybe north of 40, actually need to eat more protein in order to drive a lean body mass change, simply because they don't respond as well doesn't really have much to do with older people needing plant protein versus animal protein. It's just overall. But now we can look at the milk protein side. There's a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition looks specifically at beef protein compared to milk protein. So milk protein being whey, casein, blend essentially. They gave them 30 grams of either protein, either beef or milk protein, and they did it in a labeled isotope. So essentially they were able to watch where the amino acids from these proteins went and they were able to look in the blood and via muscle biopsy to see where these aminos actually traveled to. They found that beef, believe it or not, was more rapidly absorbed and digested. That's surprising. I really would not have thought that. So beef protein was more rapidly absorbed but led to about the same increase in mTOR C1 as milk, which means as far as the anabolic quote unquote signal is concerned, it was about the same as milk. But there's a big but. 
milk protein led to more muscle protein synthesis in the first two hours after consumption, whereas beef was more so over the following five hours. But what's very interesting is that overall, after a five hour period of time, they were about the same rates of muscle protein synthesis. Milk protein just seemed to stack it a little bit more early on and trickle down, whereas beef seemed to be low in the beginning and taper up as time went on. This does tell us a lot about potential timing, right? Because whey protein, especially like a whey protein concentrate that digests a tiny bit slower, We've seen for years that this is optimal surrounding a workout. And now we get straight back to like 1990s stuff where we, we actually thought that having protein right after a workout in the form of like a whey or casein or whey casein blend or mil straight milk protein, which is a combination of the two, is optimal. What's funny is that even though at the five hour mark, there was not a statistically significant difference. If you look at the data, you actually look at the study, there is a difference. Okay, the milk protein, led to a 277 micromole per liter increase in leucine or levels of leucine versus the beef protein being 231 micromoles per liter leucine. Hmm, that seems pretty significant to me. And what we have to understand is unless you know how to read scientific literature, which is not as easy as just going on PubMed and perusing it, you have to understand that statistically significant doesn't always mean that it is significant, right? Statistically significant can mean a lot of things. It essentially means how much of a change it is from their predicted value it's kind of, or a predicted change. So it doesn't always mean when something is not statistically significant that it isn't actually significant. Because looking at this data, we can see that having milk protein does seem to significantly, maybe not statistically significantly, <laughs> be more impactful. Makes sense. So case in point, have a whey protein shake shortly after your workout, unless you're fasting or doing something else, it's not going to hurt you to not. But the optimal time would be to have a whey protein shake right after your workout. We still have a lot more to unpack with this. For the record, I put a link down below for my favorite whey protein shake. It's a company called Bomar Nutrition. I have helped them formulate a lot of these flavors. So I've helped them design it. They've gotten rid of the artificial flavorings and the sucralose because people have spoken and that's not what they want. And there's more literature to support things like stevia, monk fruit, and allulose. This is hands down the best tasting protein powder I think you will ever have. I mean, I can't guarantee it's going to be the best tasting, but I can guarantee it's the best tasting I've ever had. Strawberry milkshake, banana milkshake, vanilla milkshake, chocolate, the amount of flavors they have, cookies and cream, unbelievable. And if you mix it with a little bit of almond milk or raw milk, I am telling you, it tastes as close to like a McDonald's milkshake as you're going to get. It is unreal. And that link down below saves you 15% off. Again, yeah, they're a sponsor on this channel, but I use it, it's relevant. I'm giving you information that you could apply and use it. And who doesn't like a milkshake? So that link down below in the top line of the description underneath this video, please, please try them out. You won't regret it. Here's another study that looks at the benefits of milk protein. Very interesting also published in Nutrients, they gave subjects 20 grams of either milk protein, combination of whey and casein, or straight whey protein, and they did a muscle biopsy. Almost the exact same levels of muscle protein synthesis occurred. The only difference is whey was faster. So kind of repeating the same nonsense that we've been talking about before. But now let's look at a rodent model paper to get a little more evidence on it. This one, they gave rats either whey protein, milk protein, or casein protein. And they found that whey protein increased muscle protein synthesis at 30 minutes, milk protein increased it at 60 minutes, and casein protein increased it at 120 minutes. But the benefit of the milk protein was that it actually got benefits of all the timings. It had the benefit of the short, the medium, and the long. Whereas the whey protein was largely stacked towards the beginning and the casein protein was largely stacked towards the end. Are we going right back to old school stuff that casein protein is good if you're going to bed and you want like a longer term benefit? Like you wanna take it before bed and have a sustained trickle throughout the night? Might be, well, let's unpack this. We have to ask ourselves the question, does just the amount of protein you have during the day matter the most? Is that really what matters? Like, do we just get our 200 grams of protein however which way we wanna slice it throughout the day and that's what matters? Well, there's a study published in the International Society of Sports Nutrition, it's Brad Schoenfeld's paper. It's probably one of the most cited protein papers that's out there. And essentially in this paper, they did find, in this systematic review and meta-analysis, that having 
your daily protein was more important than any kind of protein timing optimization. But, and this is a big but, within this own study, with this, we have to look at the marginal data. So I want you to take a look at the chart that is on the screen right now. On the chart, you'll see that hypertrophy is on the left, strength is on the right, and if you look carefully, you'll see that there is actually a marginal difference in like leaning towards its favor to protein timing versus just daily protein intake. This is why the nuance of a study is important. You can't just say if something is statistically significant that it's the end all be all. When you look at the marginal data, actually optimizing your protein timing does squeak you out a couple extra percent. And if you're someone that is really concerned with getting that extra five or 10% and you're not just saying, hey, I'm looking at this for the general masses, well, you may wanna optimize your timing. As a matter of fact, the study itself even says, and I quote, although the small number of studies limits the ability to draw conclusions on the matter. What that means is they didn't have enough data to really draw a strong conclusion and they probably still saw some promise in protein timing optimization. Bottom line, it certainly doesn't hurt and is likely beneficial to stack your protein earlier in the day or surrounding your workout. You don't have anything to lose and you certainly, based on this chart and the literature, have something to gain. But let's talk protein at night. If we have this same discussion, we would say, okay, well, all that matters is when I get my protein in. And based on that new study that came out in December of 2023, it basically showed us that we could have 100 grams of protein in one sitting earlier in the day, and we would absorb just as much as if we were to split it up into different meals. So it becomes a little less relevant to have your protein at night, knowing that as long as you're getting enough earlier in the day, you're fine. However, there are some benefits to having protein at night, maybe 90 minutes or so before bed. For this, we looked at a study published in the International Journal of Exercise Science. Okay, it took a look at experienced lifters over the course of eight weeks, and it had them consume 54 grams of casein protein prior to 12 p.m. or 54 grams of casein protein 90 minutes before bed. Interestingly, no quote unquote statistically significant difference but if you look at the marginal data, to most people, it seems like quite a bit. The people that had the casein protein in the morning over this eight week period gained about 0.4 kilograms of muscle mass, lean body mass. The group that had the casein protein before bed gained 1.2 kilograms of muscle mass or lean body mass. I don't know, that sounds like quite a bit. That's three times, it's 200% difference between having casein the protein in the morning and at night? Huh. I mean, it makes me wonder if maybe I should be having more protein before bed. But one thing that's very important is a lot of people don't sleep well if they have protein before bed. So if it's gonna disrupt your sleep, that's a no-go. That is a no siree. But if you sleep well and you can have protein before bed, especially a casein protein, hmm, this might be pretty interesting. But, for those of us that are also trying to lose fat, we have to ask ourselves the question, do we actually blunt fat loss when we have protein before bed? Because we are giving ourselves food, we're decreasing our fasting length overnight. It doesn't sound like it'd be very good. However, there was some literature that painted some light on this. Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition found that there was actually no difference in body composition, no difference in the respiratory quotient in the morning if people were consuming protein before bed or not. So meaning the actual rates of fat oxidation based upon the respiratory quotient, which is how you can look at this, there's no difference. So it didn't impede fat loss. But more importantly, something that's very black and white for even most people in the mainstream to understand, it didn't affect insulin levels because you're not consuming carbohydrates. If you have a bunch of carbohydrates before bed, there is a likely chance that your insulin levels will be elevated in the morning depending on how long ago you ate it. With protein, it didn't seem to do that. Insulin levels were right smack where they should be in the morning, meaning that it did not impede fat loss. Not to mention casein protein has a high amount of tryptophan and melatonin. It might actually help you sleep. The trick is having it 90 minutes before bed, not having it right before bed. I've made that mistake and my heart rate goes through the roof. So protein optimization does actually matter. But what matters the most, if you're going to optimize for timing, Get the most amount of protein, even 100 grams, surrounding your workout, and perhaps do a mix. If you just did 100 grams of whey protein, there's a good chance it wouldn't get used. But if you did a mix of whey protein and beef, maybe a 40 or 50 gram shake and 50 grams of protein from beef, 
Then you could really go the rest of the day, not eat that much protein, and maybe just have a nice little 50 gram serving or a 30 gram serving before bed of casein protein. You might be surprised what happens. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.